Hello. All right, everyone. I'm back. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Gemini Rashi as part of this ongoing series about the signs or Rashis. Um, <clears throat> in Vedic astrology, we call them Rashis, which can mean um, an arc or a sign. So, again, this is just the introduction of the signs. You can go so deep into the signs and you can spend forever uh, like meditating, contemplating some of these qualities. Um, but, you know, I usually, I save that, I like to teach that sort of thing one-on-one -on -one with a person because I think each person is meant to get a unique take on the signs and is meant to do certain things with it. So these are just like basic um, lessons for my, for, for you guys who are studying and then for my tutoring students that I can refer them back to these videos. Um, so Gemini, we're going to talk about Gemini. Gemini is the sign of a girl with a lute, which was an basically like an old-fashioned musical instrument like a ukulele but it can also sometimes it's described as a girl with a violin in a more modern context but it's basically a girl with a musical excuse me a musical instrument this happens every time I go to speak on YouTube I can't speak um, <clears throat> and then a boy with a club so the boy with the club symbolizes the left brain and the masculine side of the mind. These, these two, the twins, the pair, they symbolize the hemispheres of the brain, the two sides, the left and right brain, and they symbolize the intellect. And you see it's the third sign. The number one is like the self, the bursting forth, it relates to the sun. The number two relates to the moon, and it's uh, even, and it's now there's two. There's duality, there's a reflection, you know, there's relationships, that's why moon relates to these things and Taurus and then the third sign Gemini is the number three is the oh wow now we have a separate viewpoint for these two things we have a triangle we don't just have duality we have something in the middle so that's like almost be forming the ego mind so you see mind gets created um, at the number three in an occult sense or like in a esoteric sense the number three is related to Mars, and Mars is the plan of uh, our concepts and our paradigms and very much the plan of our ego viewpoint. Fire element. You know, Mars represents the fire element, which is the element of perception and cognition. And Gemini, likewise, is the sign of cognition and perception. So I hope you guys are starting to see a connection here now with the number three, the third sign, what this means in numerology even, what this means, and then, you know, the third planet Mars how that connects so there's like this side of Gemini which is a boy with a club showing that destructive side of the left brain wants to go out and explore it's curious wants to hit things and mess with stuff um, like young boy you know and then there's a young girl with a musical instrument which symbolizes more like refinement sophistication creativity and developing a skill you know so these are like two really important sides of Gemini and so you'll see some Geminis that are leaning more to one way or the other because the rest of the chart will speak to it. So like you get someone who's got real strong Mars and Jupiter and other things going on in Gemini, you'll get that more like courageous boy with the club. Like that's why a Gemini in the third house has to, do, has to do with valor and courage. Again, like connecting to Mars, we can see on that side, the boy with the club. Um, Teddy Roosevelt is a great example of that. You know, the guy, the president who would just go out, you know, back in those days, he could just leave everything to his vice president and just go roaming off through the national parks for months at a time during his presidency. You know, he was a real exploring, like courageous type of person. Um, then you see, and you see a lot of like military people actually with having a lot of Gemini stuff. Um, <clears throat> then you'll see you know, musicians and artists and famous people, they're having more of that girl aspect of the pair, the Gemini coming out more when you see a stronger, you know, Venus or something like that going on. <clears throat> so Gemini is a dual sign, you know, it's very adaptable, it's very versatile, and it changes very, very easily depending on other things. It's probably, it's possibly the most, like, changeable, sensitive, erratic sign. And it is a wind sign, and the wind signs are vata, nature, which is irregular and erratic. So Gemini, Mituna, the pair Rashi, or the twin Rashi. If you ask me, Gemini rules twins, but some people think it doesn't and just think it rules pairs. But Gemini rules twins 
Front Rising, a pair of humans with mace and with loot. Already explained that. Western, they, all the wind or air signs dwell in the west. Airy, so wind sign, like I just said. Two-footed, it's biped. It's a human sign, so it's about your intelligence, your human qualities. Gemini is pro possibly the most human of all the signs. Night Strong, village roaming. So again, it's... Um, it's not village living like Taurus, but it's village roaming. So it has to do with traveling through different villages, but it's really cities. Um, I think, I'm not sure, I can't remember what word that is used, but um, sometimes the word for city in Sanskrit can be described as village or city. Um, I think that it's definitely true that Gemini rules cities and not just little villages. That would be Taurus in our modern context. Gemini rules big cities. Like I said earlier, um, places where you can get all kinds of experiences at any time. Um, it's Vata, as I explained earlier, normal limb, just a normal body sign, um, not tall like Taurus or big like Aries. And then um, grass colored is the pair ruled by Mercury. So uh, grass colored sounds like it's saying green, but I also, I actually find Jim and I relating to light blue really well. Um, so there is some debate on that. Um, for me, Libra is green, you know what I mean? So green is just Libra, if I need to see something green. Just the other day, I predicted at one of my students what color bicycle, you know, she would have with a green bike because of that sign being active and not because of a, Gemini. So um, there might be some truth to it being green though, because it is an air sign. Green's a cooling color. So if it, I would say either blue or green would be the colors most associated with Gemini. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all of the uh, all the qualities that Prasha gives. Now let me give you guys some examples. All right, so. This is a really neat example. Um, this is the chart of uh, Jean Lafitte. I'm probably not saying that right. He's a French pirate. Um, back in the old days, he fought <laughs> between, uh, he actually fought sometimes on the US side, sometimes um, on other sides, sometimes he would fight for Native Americans. He was kind of an interesting fellow. He was very opportunistic. Um, he has the ruling planet Mars in Gemini, you see? And so his, he's a guy who was kind of self-made, you know, he made himself, he had Rahu in the Ascendant and it worked well for him. Um, also Rahu in the Ascendant is a place where that can make one a thief and have to steal a lot. And he was a pirate, so he definitely stole a lot. So that's kind of funny. Um, but Mars in Mars is the planet of the arms and also brotherhood and peers. So if you're like a, a leader of, a huge fleet of pirates and you're like the pirate captain you must be pretty good with your arms and pretty skilled and kind of intense and uh you know able to use that mars and that third house willpower and valor and strength in a good way right and mars is starved in gemini so like i said it's actually normally not a good place but he has this interchange with mercury so the first and third lords are interchanging so that makes it a lot better and that shows that it's kind of a lot more part of his dharma um, and he has that Mars really strongly delighted by Jupiter as well. <clears throat> and Jupiter is his actual Amakarika, showing he was a really wise person, actually. Um, so this guy was incredibly wealthy and successful and was like basically a king, you know, through the use of his pirating. And Gemini is like the sign of like the, the city, the chaos, the organ, it's like finding, if you got good things in Gemini, you can find grace and success through chaos. Sag is the sign of order and tradition, you see? So Gemini is like, oh, like I'm doing this, now I'm doing that. It's like all this, it's the chaos. It's like New York City, you know, just these chaotic places. Gemini rules Las Vegas, it rules gambling, you know what I mean? Um, it, it rules just playing the game of life and hustling and winning somehow. So, we can see how that would work if you were a pirate, right? So, yeah, so he has really <clears throat> won the game of life through uh, 
through gambling and through um, uncertainty and, you know, blackjack and, you know, all these sort of things that we associate with pirates. Gemini really is the sign of um, gambling. You know what I mean? It really is. It's a sign of rolling the dice, you know? <clears throat> so if you have uh, lucky things with Gemini, you can do better at that. And that was the case for him. Okay, now we have the chart of Bob Dylan. Um, Bob Dylan is a Sagittarius rising and his Atmakaric is in Taurus with the moon, which um, if you study Gemini, that's a classic musician placement. But um, Venus and Mercury, uh, he has this Mahapurusha yoga with Mercury there. He has the, um, you know, the great person of Mercury and Mercury is in, awake. And it's also uh, delighted by Venus very strongly. It's with the sun, but it's not combust, which is rare. And it's in the seventh house of other people in the public and his lyrics and his songwriting are just so in depth and so profoundly um, insightful. You know, he had an incredible way of looking into other people and, you know, just one of the most talented musicians of all time. Gemini is the sign of musicians as well. It is literally the only sign of a person holding a musical instrument. Um, actually, uh, Carmina Amza, did a book on the the musician placement that Jamini gives and, and wrote about that and talked about the moon and stuff. And she found that Gemini was a sign that was the most common. And I was like, yeah, of course, of course that would make sense because it's the only sign literally holding a musical instrument. So Gemini is actually the most common sign to have your, your you know, your Atmakarika, your self planets in for musicians. Again, speaking to everything that I was just saying, you know, so it's about using your skills, your arms, um, creative expression. It's about, it's a sign of song, a sign of dance, um, writing, and, you know, like I said, using the arms, developing our motor skills, our dexterity, mental dexterity, verbal dexterity, all kinds of things. Those are related to Gemini. And, you know, Bob Dylan has written like so much music. He's put out so many albums and they've been so good too. Whereas a lot of people that produce that much stuff, it's like, well, they only made one good album, but this guy made just dozens more out amazing albums than most musicians will ever dream of. And, you know, we can also, it's interesting too, because he has Mars and K2 on the third cusp. Again, kind of reinforcing the third cusp is like the third sign. So we see this Mars, this connection of doing a lot. So he was very, very like skilled, really a doer, you know what I mean? And really, um, you know, just produced a massive musical corpus as a result. Um, this chart of Steve Carell, um, he's a famous actor and comedian, most famous for the show The Office, considered the Considered the number one television show, television show of all time, I believe, um, or for, for one of the top television shows of all time. So, um, yeah, so a person who produced or who is like the lead actor or figure in the largest, you know, comedy television show of all time, look at his Atmakarika, Mars is in Gemini. And it's in the 10th house of career, making a big impact. And again, Mars is starved in Gemini, doesn't do that well. But look at how the Lord of it's exalted, so strong in this blessed Bhadra yoga or whatever, the Mahapurush yoga also has a Jupiter Mahapurush yoga, I believe. Um, or, well, actually, it might technically not if the moon's there, but it's either way, it's Gajakasari, and it's, it's a powerful, powerful Jupiter, delighted by moon and delighting moon back. Mm, look at proud Saturn, uh, either proud or ridiculously strong son there so yeah this is a really 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 strong person so he was able to take that mars gemini that's strangely that's the career planet and that's the weakest the only weak thing in his chart so he was able to turn that into something really positive which you'll find comedians do so comedians i've noticed this so much that they do a form of almost like a form of alchemy with their karma working out their say their star of mars and by playing a character such as uh, michael scott the character from the office who's basically an idiot and an incompetent boss so the whole reason that like 
the whole crux of this show, The Office, is about this incompetent boss who's like a man child. He's like your standard American guy who like doesn't deserve what he doesn't even deserve the job he has. Um, and it's basically just like a child. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, how did you even get to where you are? And there's so many people in the world like that. I think that's why, and in America especially, I think that's why it was so relatable. Um, I I think the UK office it has similar ideas, but I'm not I'm not familiar with that show, so I can't say anything about that. But the American US version is like that, and so you know we can see this Mars and Gemini. <laughs> it's so obvious if you if you know your Vashtas. I know I haven't covered the Mars Lajitati Vashtas, but Mars and Gemini, he's he's kind of um, he's if he doesn't have the uh, let's just say that he's yeah he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know how to use his arms all the time sometimes when he's afflicted and so it seems that steve carell has made that a really really funny hilarious thing that he's done with his karma um working with this mars and gemini the starved energy and it's strongly starved by that mars but then it's still showing that it will do a lot of great things from um other angles on the chart from his yogas and his um jaimini placements so so he's a pretty interesting fellow. And he's also done like incredibly serious drama roles. And he's done, he's done a lot of acting across the board. He's just a really, really skilled actor. As you can see from this Mercury in Virgo, Mercury is the planet of acting. Watch my video on acting if you want to know more about that. But yeah, really strong Gemini person, just super multi-talented, done a lot of things. He can be dramatic, he can play a psycho, he can play a comedian. He can do a lot with his arms, but he's also, must have been really somehow sensitive or had some of it. He has his own weird starvation Mars Gemini issue. So then it's like, that's why he had the karma to play that Michael Scott, that incompetent boss. If he didn't have that, that one week thing, he might've gone on to play amazing heroes, but who knows, maybe that wouldn't have made him as successful. So it's kind of interesting. We can see how that was a part of his karma. And then we have uh, Theodore Roosevelt. So I touched on him um, when I was talking earlier. This guy is an example of the, the more boy with the club side of Mars, the Mars. Look at how Mars is exalted in his eighth house, just ready to just burn the fire and, and everything. Um, and he has a Jupiter on the ascendant in Gemini. So like I said, more of a Jupiter Mars influence. You get a real like that more the boy with the club wanting to explore, be courageous you know um a lot of the i bet a lot of the settlers of the out the west you know in the old days the manifest destiny all these ideas would have been related to you know jupiter um or you know the gemini kind of energy jupiter and gemini so this this president you know he was really all about like exploration and roaming and using your arms and applying a little bit of elbow grease to solve the problem. So that's what Jim and I can do when it's more of the uh, male planets or that side, the masculine side and the more feminine side. It's, it's got a creative, artistic, sophisticated acting, entertainment, you know, expression, dance, choreography. It's got that aspect to it. And remember, Jim and I is a male sign but it is ruled by mercury who is androgynous or like they were called neuter planets in the old days but i think obviously androgynous is a more appropriate word to use now so um so yeah gemini is actually an androgynous sign which can kind of help us see again how gemini is so dual and mixed and in the middle mercury likewise rules the earth element the most mixed element um Okay, so I hope that gives you guys a good understanding of Gemini, just some basic baseline to work with. All right, thanks, you guys. Take care.